You. You. 1 a.m. this morning you got up. 1 a.m. Yeah. Anna's just corrected me, it was actually 10 past 12. Um, she's been up with him all night, so she's rather tired this morning. So I'm allowing her to remain off camera because I'm nothing if not a gentleman. But yeah, as we mentioned yesterday, his sleep patterns have got even worse. He went to bed last night at, what would you say, about seven o'clock? Half seven he went to bed last night and got out of bed at 10 past 12. So he's only had, what's that? That's like four and a half, five hours of sleep. So he should be exhausted. But the problem we've got now, or the problem Anna's got now, because I'm about to go out, is whether or not she lets him go to bed when he gets tired, which could be any time from like three o'clock onwards based on the amount of sleep he's had and the time he got up. Or does she try and keep him awake until his normal bedtime, running the risk that he either just gets really, really grumpy because of it, or still gets up really early tomorrow morning and ends up even more sleep deprived, which is gonna make him even grumpy. I mean, he doesn't look grumpy at the moment. He will get grumpy as the day goes on. It doesn't sound like a lot of fun. However, you won't find out a resolution to that until tomorrow, because in about five minutes time, I'm jumping in my car, ready to jump on a train to go down to London for what I think, I hope, I'm now allowed to call a secret football manager project. I think I'm allowed to call it that now. If not, what are they gonna do? By the time this vlog comes out, it'll already be finished. It's just habit now that whenever I'm here at my home from home, I have to let you know that I'm here. Peterborough train station, everybody. About to get on the slow train to London. Normally, for me, a trip to London, 45 minutes. Sega slash Sports Interactive. The hour and 15 minute train. Oh, don't you know who I am? Well, hopefully this isn't a sign of things to come this weekend. I've just managed to burn my lips on a pasty. And also, this train, tiny tables. I feel like a giant. Made even more convincing by the fact I have a small coffee as well. So, as far as I'm concerned, the new narrative of this weekend is Kev's transition into becoming a giant with a burnt lip. <laughs> Don't do that, please. Just pulling into King's Cross. Don't know how much more I'm going to be able to film until I'm in the hotel because secrets. I guess you'll find out just as soon as I do. Made it to London. That was without question one of the most traumatic journeys of my life. Not only did I burn my face and not be able to finish my pasty because it was still too hot, but then I had to sacrifice the half of the pasty that was cooling down because I did have a carriage complete to myself when I first got on, but then a couple even older than I am got on, sat in the seats directly opposite me, our knees were touching, and they just started sort of touching each other. Um, hands on each other's knees, all snuggling up, and when the smooching began, I decided it was time to get up out of my seat, take the pasty, put it in the bin, and then just sit somewhere else on the way back. I'm too English to just move regardless, because I had a reason to move. I had to throw the pasty away. I was willing to sacrifice my suitcase and all my stuff to never return to that seat, but luckily they got off at Finsbury Park whereas I was staying on all the way to King's Cross. So I am now here at King's Cross, where I'm meeting some people who I'm not putting in the video. I'm now hovering outside King's Cross Station where I'm meeting a secret person to do secret things with. You won't be finding out who the secret person is for a few days, I don't think. I'm not sure. Further clarification to come. Ooh, secrets. And I am in the hotel. That has been a bit weird, a bit mad. This is the hotel room, I'm in a holiday inn. There's eight other people who you'll recognize if you follow my other channel, who are also in this hotel right now. We've spent the afternoon hidden away in Sports Interactive, getting ready for the secret thing that's actually happening tomorrow. Today was just like a prep day. Um, met a lot of people I've not met before, uh, some of which you might meet this evening. I've got a it's still, still not really clear whether I'm allowed to reveal who else is here. So I guess that will make itself clear based on how the rest of the vlog goes from here. But it's nearly six o'clock. 
Um, we've just got ourselves checked into the hotel. Um, everyone's heading over to a pub around the corner to watch the Liverpool West Ham game. I'm half tempted to head over to Leicester Square where there's a pop-up wrestling shop. But having looked at it online, it looks like it's actually pretty much the same stuff that was at Comic-Con last weekend. So I think I might tag along to the pub and pretend I'm interested in Premier League football, mainly because at eight o'clock, we need to be all back here so we can head over for the meal. I don't want to miss out on that because we're going to Bodine's and Sega are paying. So I can have a lot, a lot of Bodine's food. So I think it's probably worth missing out on the wrestling thing so that I can make sure that I'm there for it. The, because otherwise I'm not entirely confident I'll make it back to here from Leicester Square in two hours and make it worthwhile visiting that pop-up wrestling shop. So I think that's the plan. Meeting downstairs in about five minutes. So I just need to uh, freshen myself up, make myself beautiful. This burn on my lip is still really, really uncomfortable. Don't eat hot pasties from the train station. I am starving though, because I had to throw half of it away. That has been a crazy day. It's about 11 o'clock. We just got back to the hotel. Apologies for the terrible light in here. There's not actually any light bulbs on the ceiling, so it's all little wall lights scattered around the room. Here's a weird thing about this hotel room. It's a smartphone that's just in the room with internet access and unlimited local and international calls. All out of this weird little smartphone. Imagine anyone who's ever stayed in a half decent hotel before thinking, yeah, of course there is, Kev. It's 2017. For me, that's new. I only usually stay in a Premier Inn. This is a little bit nicer than a Premier Inn. I'm on a swivel chair, for example, so I can spin around, I can slide back over to the other side of the room and just sit on the sofa that's back there if I want to. Or there's my bed over there. Decent sized telly. It's a good room. I still can't really tell you much about what we're doing. It's difficult. Tomorrow's vlog, by the time tomorrow's vlog comes out, if you keep an eye on the Football Manager Twitter page, I think you'll have a better idea of what's been going on. And hopefully, in tomorrow's vlog, I'll be able to show you some of the people who are here, tell you a little bit about what we've done, and what's gonna be happening. But until I get the go ahead from Sports Interactive about their secret Sports Interactive event, I can't really tell you anymore. Feel free to guess down in the comments about who might be here, how many people might be here, what we might be doing. It's all very cool. Um, but I, as promised, I'm gonna answer a couple of Q&A questions and then we'll call it there on a weird, weird vlog today. It, it, it just seems bizarre that I've been down in London all day, spent the whole day doing really, really cool stuff. And I can't show you any of it because even the stuff that was not under NDA, if you like, even the stuff that wasn't in the building. There's loads of other football manager YouTubers who'd be hovering around in the background. And it's just spoilers that I'm not allowed to give you. I think I'm probably not even allowed to tell you as much as I'm telling you now, but I've got to fill the vlog somehow. They know, they know this is my main channel. It'd be crazy talk saying I couldn't do anything at all like this. But let's find some of these Q&A questions. So, Jamie the Gooner wants to know, what is my biggest regret? Um, I don't have any regrets. I mean, put yourself in my position. Just think about where I am right now compared to where I was a year ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I'm currently sat in a decent hotel in London, which is being paid for by the makers of my favourite game of all time, which I've been playing for 25 years. They've paid for me to get here. They've paid for my dinner. They've paid for all the Diet Coke I can drink. And I'm here doing this because this is my job now. My job is playing my favourite game on the internet and talking to you lot sometimes about that, sometimes about something different. But I basically earn a living playing video games and talking into this camera. Which, as you can see by the fact I'm doing it in a hotel room at 11 o'clock on a Saturday night, I can do from anywhere in the world whenever I want. My life is awesome. And 
I am massively grateful to every single one of you for allowing my life to be this awesome because I am well aware, more aware than perhaps you realise, I am well aware that the only reason I'm able to do this is because there are so many of you who are interested in me doing this. But I can't, can't imagine changing any of the steps that led me to this point because I just, I can't think of any way that my life could be better than it is right now. I mean, yeah, I guess they could have whisked us away to Barbados rather than East London, but this is still pretty cool. And to be fair, I couldn't have gone to Barbados because it wouldn't be fair to leave Anna for however many days. Um, she's got uni, kids have got to go to school, I don't like flying, I wouldn't want to go on my own, that's something I'd want to share with Anna. Um, so, in actual fact, I can't even improve this trip. My life is awesome, and it's this awesome because of all the things that have happened along the way. Um, even the, I mean, I've had two major career changes in my life. I don't regret either of them. I, I was accepted into university when I first left school, and I delayed it for a year, and in that year, um, me and my ex-wife ended up having a baby, Lucy, and within like 14 months of me delaying university for a year, I was married as a, still as a teenager. Um, that then since led to a divorce, but I don't regret doing it, because if I hadn't have done it, we wouldn't have had Lucy, and that would have been rubbish. We wouldn't have had Amy, and that would have been rubbish. And if I hadn't, if I'd have gone to university when I was 18, I wouldn't have got a first like I did. I wouldn't have done computer science like I did. So even stuff that was seen at the time as bad things turned out pretty good in the end. And yeah, I, re I regret nothing. Um, it, the second part to Jamie the Gooner's question, what's the best thing about leaving? I assume you mean about leaving work over the summer. Um, yesterday was a pretty good example of the best thing about leaving. If I was still a teacher, I couldn't have gone to Neaton yesterday and made those videos that I made. So there you go, that's the best thing about leaving. Opportunity. It means I can now do stuff on my terms, fit it into my life, my time scales, where I want to fit it in. Just that freedom to make my own decisions, not have a boss. I love, I love not having a boss. All right, let's scroll through. We don't need a huge amount of questions, but we'll try and find a couple more. So Jay Ferg wants to know, as you scale to new heights of YouTube stardom, do you ever have moments missing anonymity or feel a loss of privacy? Um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I have lost anonymity. I've, I've traveled to London today I've walked around London this afternoon and this evening. No one's recognised me, no one's stopped me. Um, I can move quite freely anywhere I want to go, you know. Ultimately, even adding up the two channels, I've got less than 40,000 subscribers. I get, I don't know, across the two, tra two channels, on average, maybe 50 or 60,000 views a day. That, in the grand scheme of things, across the entire world, that's not a lot of people who know who I am. I mean, it's a lot of people who know I am, but they're not in one place. It's not like I'm constantly walking around a football stadium full of the 60,000 people who might recognise me. Um, I can move around fairly freely. At the moment, it's still awesome and cool and exciting when someone stops me in the street and says, you're Kev. I love that. If you see me in the street, if you see me in the street, don't, don't just walk past. Stop me and say, hey, you're Kev. Even if you just want to say hello, even if you just want to shake hands, even better if you want to stop for a selfie or something. That's really cool. I get excited by that still. And I don't think we've necessarily lost privacy. These vlogs, it's not as if there's a camera pointing at us 24 hours a day. I show you the parts of our lives that I want to show you. Like today, I didn't leave the house until nearly lunchtime and I filmed almost nothing at home because Anna was in her pyjamas after a long night. Um, Andy was still in his pyjamas after a long night. The house was a little bit of a mess. And just didn't show you it. We didn't lose any privacy at all. 
So no, I don't, I don't regret or miss anything at the moment. Looking a year into the future, things continue to grow as they are now. I don't know, I still, at heart, I'm an egomaniac. I don't see myself being bothered by people stopping me in the street or knowing who I am. I, I just, I don't ever see a situation where I think it's anything but really cool. Right, let's try for one more question. Let's flick through the phone again. And then we'll probably do a few more of these tomorrow with Anna. Um, I'm deliberately skipping through the ones that I could answer with Anna because I want her to be able to answer some questions as well. Matt B 88 wants to know, how do you find traveling and what method do you prefer? So car, bus, train, coach, etc. Uh, my favorite method of travel is car, as long as I'm driving. If I'm the passenger, I get really badly travel sick. Same on buses and coaches, really badly travel sick. Um, I don't mind being on trains, although I like to be in first class because I'm six foot two and a big lad and normal carriages. That one today was all right because there was hardly anyone else on the train, but normally if I'm crammed into standard class on a train, I don't fit in the seat properly. Um, planes are fine. I get a little bit jittery because it's not something I do very often and it's a weird sensation, but car, as long as I'm driving, is my favorite. Kierups wants to know what my predictions are for the vlog and gaming channel for this time next year. The only predictions I've got is that I'll still be doing both of them. I don't, I don't really have any predictions. I don't have targets or projections or anything that far in advance, looking a year in advance. I have no way of knowing where we're going to be if we'd have... I mean, my year-end target for this vlog channel is 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's the, the target I set myself in August. I mean, that looked like it might be quite hard to achieve because we were on like three and a half, four thousand. We were adding maybe 80 subscribers a month. And it seemed like quite an ambitious target at the time. And obviously now we've smashed it. And the target for the year end is now 25,000, which I set about two or three weeks ago. And again, it looks like we might hit that even before December, which again is crazy. So... It's really hard to set targets that far in advance when your short-term targets get smashed so easily or sometimes stuff speeds up, sometimes stuff close, slows down. I would like to think by the end of this year, by the end of 2017, I'd like both channels to be on 25,000 subscribers. I think that would be awesome because then I can say I've got 50,000 subscribers total, which would be really awesome. Um, as a bit of an ambitious stretch goal, and it relies on the vlog carrying on the way it has been so far, but... It's realistic-ish, based on the last month we've had, that by the end of the year we could have 10 million views total across the two channels. That would be really exciting. This time next year, as long as I'm still paying the bills, I'm fine. I mean, if I carry on as a YouTuber for the next 30 years and every month is exactly the way the last 30 days have been, I'll be happy. That would be awesome. Hopefully, hopefully it will be more than that because more is always good, but it could stay like this forever and that would pay the bills and give us a decent standard of living and that would be awesome. Right, we will do one more question then. So Skylar Gray wants, oh goodness me, she's got lots of questions. Um, okay, a lot of these are for Anna. Um, so I'm just gonna do the first one. How did the girls first take to meeting Andy? What about now, are they protective, protected of him or anything? Um, Right, let me tackle that part one part at a time. How did the girls first take to meeting Andy? They were fantastic with him straight away. Really good. Um, no no issues there at all. They've always got on fine. They've always completely accepted him. He's immediately accepted them. And we've talked about it before. We did just kind of click into being a five-piece family really, really quickly and easily. Minimal teething problems. I was pretty surprised and it was really awesome. Good kids. Um... What about now? Same. Um, are they protective of him? They don't really need to be. Um, they go to different schools. They're never out and about without us. There's no reason for them to be protective of him. Is he just their little brother? Well, he's not Amy's little brother. He's her big brother. But yeah, they're just a three. So we're just, we're just a normal five piece family now. That aren't normal in any way. But you get my idea. What's happening now? My phone is now telling me something about breakfast. I like breakfast. What's it saying? Apparently I'm going to have a breakfast at 9am. 
Right, we are going to leave things there because I've already talked for much longer than I expected to do as part of this Q&A. And I've still got the stuff from earlier today to slot in as well. And if we're meeting for breakfast at 9, it's now half past 11. And I've got to edit, render, upload yet. So if I stop right now, I might be asleep by 1. And I might get like 6 or 7 hours sleep, which would be cool. It's a big, big day tomorrow. But hopefully, I'll be able to share with you a little bit more on the vlog. I don't want tomorrow to just be me and Anna answering questions but it might be. So if it is, no, it's out of my hands. And I will share with you as much as I'm allowed to share with you. I'll take you as many places as I'm allowed to take you, but I don't want to mess this up because I want to be able to do more stuff like this. So I have to behave. If you have enjoyed today's vlog, please make sure you pop a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.